Hi, this is Deja from FTC22012, and in this tutorial, I'll teach you how to make a simple autonomous mode in Java for FTC. So, like we did in our teleop mode, we will need to declare our motors. So, we declare our DC motors front right, front left, back right, and back left. We also create an elapsed timer object which is basically a timer that allows us to keep track of time in the game, which will be useful later on. So unlike in our teleop mode, we declare our motors inside of the class, and then we instantiate them in runop mode. This is because we are going to want to use our motors in a method, which we can't do if we only create them inside runop mode. So we also need to reverse the directions for some motors, as discussed in the Telia tutorial. And now we just wait for start, and we make sure that if a stop is requested, that we will stop during initialization. So now we can get to our code that makes the autonomous mode work. So what this does is it resets the time in our timer back to zero, and then now it will start counting from zero again and then this checks if the timer exceeds zero and until it does it will set all of the motors to one which just moves the robot forward and then this does the same thing except it strafes right now a problem you may notice with this code is that a it's not very intuitive what it's doing if you didn't have this comment here it would be very hard to discern what this code is actually doing. Also, it takes a lot of line and lines and makes our code look uh, inefficient. So, what we can do is create a method which will do the same thing and just make our code look a lot more compact and intuitive. So, now what I've done is create methods that significantly simplify the code. So now, if you look here, instead of that huge chunk of code with the while loop, we just have move forward time for two seconds, and then strafe right two seconds. And this is just way more compact and easy to read. So now let's actually go into those methods. So we created the move forward time, which takes in a time parameter, which tells it how long to move forward. And by the way, Void it just means it doesn't return anything. And it basically does the same thing as we did previously, except now the time is variable. We reset the timer, and we set the powers until the timer exceeds the time. And the strafe right method does the exact same thing. Takes in a parameter of time and strafes right until the timer is exceeded the set time. Now, while these methods might look great to use, there is a big drawback with using these methods, and that's the use of the time. So, when we say move forward time, we move the robot forward for a specified time. However, there's a problem, because we don't really care about how long the robot moves forward, we care about how much distance it moves forward in the autonomous mode. So, you can't really specify specific distance and time, you could try to figure out the robot's speed, but there's several problems with that. First off, the robot has to accelerate and decelerate, which is a problem. Additionally, the robot's screws, their tightness can change, and also the material can change. So that is a big problem. So that's why, for the future, we're going to need to use encoders, which actually specify how many rotations the motor has used. We'll discuss that in our next tutorial. But this is just a very basic autonomous mode.